What's going on, everyone? This is Jordan with Conquer Trading and Investing. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're not, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to be taking a look at Bitcoin, specifically my view of the four-year cycle. I want to share that with you. Is it totally abolished the four-year cycle? And if it's not, could one expect new all-time highs in the next cycle, as well as whether or not the halving is being front-run right now? If you do enjoy this content, please go ahead. Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and make sure to hit the like button. All right, everyone, let's jump into it. I'm going to start off here first with explaining the four-year cycle as far as how it has helped me immensely in the past, where I think we are right now as far as whether or not the four-year cycle offers any benefit. We'll be looking at if the four-year cycle does offer any benefit, when that next new all-time high might be taking place as well as whether or not the having is being front run right now. And I, I just want to start off by emphasizing that for me personally, the four year cycle offered immense benefit. What you're looking at over here is the having that occurred, the most recent having occurring on May 11th, 2020. Now, right now, the next having, the having of the miners reward approximately every four years the miners reward, the reward they get for con confirming, securing the Bitcoin network is cut in half. That is expected to be sometime around, let's call it mid to late March 2024 into early April 2024. As we get closer, we will have better estimates of exactly when that block that triggers the halving will be coming through. So beginning here, I want to go ahead and together focus on the halving event that occurred over here. Prior to this halving, it was my expectation that roughly six months after the halving, the bull market would begin and then we would be able to track it through. That's exactly what happened. That afforded us the possibility. It afforded us the ability to go ahead and accumulate a big position coming into the halving. This was most of the people involved in the space doing the same thing. It also gave the benefit, and it was an enormous one coming off the capitulation in December 2018 of being able, after you could see that, you could see this sharp bottom over here. There's like a V and then a more of a rounding one. It was distinguished through TA to be called an Adam and Eve bottoming. After that, some point early in January, I was able to go ahead using four-year cycle awareness, using TA along with four-year cycle awareness, determining that within the next three to six months, price should be trading above $8,400. Now, that was quite a bold call at the time. And the reason being was that most people were expecting price to, to trade down significantly lower at least 50% lower, they were looking for things around $1,500. There was something all over the influence channels at the time called the hyper wave. And it was the main, the mainly embraced narrative of the time. Me using my four year cycle awareness, we're going to talk about that in just a little bit as we look at whether or not the having is being front run right now. I was able to go ahead and determine, you know what, in the height of that fear, that my expectations that price would be significantly higher. Uh, and then my expectations were well, well overshot as price went up in 16 months to $14,000. Now, over here, you have this big, big, big 63% drawdown that occurred during the global lockdowns, during the financial crisis. And then the V-shape came out of the Federal Reserve's response out of that, the massive expansion of their balance sheet and then continued quantitative easing program. It is, let's say, debatable whether or not the bottom over here was caused due to this massive capitulation that took place on Bitcoin, or if it had to do with right over here that the Fed began to, this was their last interest rate hike of the hiking cycle. It is, and I don't want to lose you. I want to keep you with me over here because this is going to be a very interesting video where we're going to actually be able to take an objective look about what is happening. It's debatable whether or not the bottom over here occurred because of four-year cycle behavior. We'll look at that in a second together. Or if it had to do with this being the last rate hike of the hiking cycle, the tightening cycle that went on through all of 2018. 
And then Bitcoin doing Bitcoin things, being able to distinguish that the Fed will no longer be hiking rates, moving towards a pause, and then began front running that behavior. Now, it's also of note during this period over here for these nine months, quantitative tightening continued. Right now, we have quantitative tightening running. We have interest rates rising. And during that quantitative tightening running, risk rallied. You could see it here on Bitcoin and it rallied, uh, let's say, tremendously, putting up over a 4x in six months. All right. What I want to do is follow this line over here, this blue line above. And this is going to show you, right, as I zoom out a little bit, coming from the halving date itself, looking at the previous cycle, the 2016 cycle. So in blue over here, you're looking at the 2017 bull market run and you could see from the having to the peak that there were a lot of significant similarities one could also argue that you know what these two actually peaked around the same time now there's one significant difference for me it was a game changer that there was no blow off top in the fourth quarter of 2021 you could see around this time as Bitcoin in, in the previous cycle had this massive blow off top. This time there was no blow off top. Now, again, it's debatable whether or not because of in October 2021, October 16, Fed meeting minutes were very uh, clear that the Federal Reserve was going to be moved towards tightening, winding down, tapering all the quantitative easing, uh, excuse me, tapering all the quantitative easing purchases, doing that by March and then moving towards liftoff, which is rate hikes. And again, was Bitcoin early in distinguishing what the Federal Reserve was going to be doing? Or was this simply a, you know, a, not a coincidence that roughly the same amount of time after the halving, Bitcoin peaked again? If you continue to move back forward, I'm going to go all the way here to the bottom, the bottom of 2018, the beginning of 2019, and you could see what's interesting is that's where the previous cycle, this is now from the 2016 halving, the halving that occurred in 2016. That's the bottom. You could see over here, here's the bear market of 2016. And I'm just going to go back. I'm sorry, this is 2012 cycle right now. This is the 2013 peak over here. That over here is the low 2015. And you could see how, again, it's, it's hard to argue that, and here you go, this is the bull market that occurred throughout 2013. By overlaying these past cycles, you could see why a lot of people did embrace the four-year cycle. From this moment on over here at the bottom in 2018, up until December, you could see why that four-year cycle awareness provided a great advantage, a great edge. Now, along with TA, that all for myself came to an end in December, uh, December uh, 3rd, actually, 2021. And you could see over here, there was a big technical breakdown price over here, trading below 53,000 said that, you know what, we're not experiencing any type of blow off top, which was absolutely my expectation. And it was a time to de-risk. I said, if we did not I've always was consistent. If we did not have a blow off top, I would no longer use the four year cycle as an edge for myself going forward. Now, we're going to look at whether or not that means that it really has been abolished or whether or not it makes more sense to actually just follow what's going on with the macro and technical analysis and use that as your edge in the markets. Now, I want to talk about first past four-year cycle behavior into relation where we are currently right now and what expectations would mean for when price would make a new all-time high on Bitcoin. Well, the, way, the way that I'm doing that initially, I'm going to do it two different ways with you. First, I'm going to line these all three of these cycles up from their all-time high, right? So for the previous, the, this most recent cycle that occurred over here in November, Right. The, the cycle before that, that was occurring in December, uh, December 17th, 21, right around that area. And then in the 2012 cycle, that was occurring November 30th in 2013. And if you're lining them up from their previous all time high, one thing that's interesting as far as four year cycle behavior over here, you could see this is marked as the having event 
Right now, the halving is expected to be around. Again, we spoke about uh, sometime around, let's call it April 2024. Price in that first cycle was off approximately 60%, the all-time high, as that halving was reached. If you move back just one more cycle to the previous cycle, price was off about, let's call it 50%. Is it fair to say if you were using four-year cycle analysis that you would be expecting price to be off roughly 50% at the time of the halving? Let's go ahead and see that and see where that places us. Somewhere, let's call it $30,000. If you were using four-year cycle and only four-year cycle analysis, that would be a reasonable expectation to have. This is very far into the future. It's hard to predict markets. Let's call it 30 to 90 days in advance. Nevertheless, six months or a year and a half in in, in advance. Nevertheless, if you were sticking to four-year cycle theory, that's what your expectations would be. And that means from now until then, no matter how much lower or for longer price went lower, you would have the opportunity to actually be accumulating a position. Why do I say that? In past cycles, you're looking at Bitcoin coming off 85% from the all-time high to the low. Again, this is four-year cycle theory. And then in the previous cycle, you had Bitcoin come off again, 85% from the all-time high to the low. Bitcoin, as you know, is already off this year uh, and and from where it peaked at 69,000 in November 2021, it's off over 70%, almost 75%, right? So this would be a time, a strong opportunity zone to be dollar cost averaging and accumulating Bitcoin. And the hope would be that you could continue doing that all the way until, uh, let's call it April 2024 at the next halving with the expectation that price was going to be around $30,000. That gives you a significant amount of time to build the position. And then with the expectation, again, using four-year cycle, that what would happen, would that be approximately six months after the halving, you would see price begin that next bull market phase, right? So that would be, wow, That if you have that opportunity, that is something that could really set you up to really change your future going forward in the future. Now, again, that's if you are embracing, espousing four-year cycle behavior. There's a lot of, let's say, credible arguments to say that, well, four-year cycle behavior never even existed. It was always about what the traditional markets were doing and what they were doing and how they were responding to Federal Reserve policy. It's also almost undeniable about the symmetry of these previous cycles when layered together. Again, uh, the four-year cycle awareness has absolutely helped change my life, my situation in life, being able to position in early. And then not only that, more importantly, hold throughout moves. If you remember, as the bull market started over here, as price came breaking above 10,000 and shot into 14,000, a lot of people were very ready to go ahead and exit positions, right? Being able to, that's a huge gain coming very quickly. As price went into 20,000, a lot of people began taking profits, reducing their position price from there in just a matter of months, put in another 3X to $60,000. It was very helpful having that type of awareness. Again, once price did not make a blow up top in the fourth quarter of 2021, I said personally going forward, I will no longer be using four-year cycle theory. It doesn't mean that I won't consult it, but what I use is my TA. I believe that the best way to trade the markets unquestionably is to spend time developing your edge, having the discipline to follow your plan and executing with strong risk and money management. There's nothing that is uh, compares to that. Now, going forward, let's look at other possibilities. And if you were following this type of four-year cycle, lining these cycles up from their all-time high, looking at the halving event, you would first uh, be looking at price again, roughly 50%. It could be anywhere 40, 60% off the all-time high. And then approximately six months after that, the bull run begin. And the expectations would be at some point late into 2024, or maybe not so late, price would be making, uh, let's call it the third or fourth quarter, 2024. 
price will be making a new all-time high. And then throughout 2025, that bull run, the, the, the really the, the sweet spot of it would be taking place. And the possibility exists that is what is going to happen. And you could see in some one thing that I really want you to notice is that from the low, I'm going to call this the low over here in the 2012 cycle. And then we're going to call this the low over here in the 2016 cycle. And you could see between the low and the halving, there was a significant front running that took place. Now, front running is the expectation is that because of the halving of the miners reward that it's going to cause due to supply and demand dynamic dynamics, uh, it's going to go ahead and trigger an upcoming bull run. Now, we've spoke a lot specifically in December 2021, January 2021, the different and evol evolving changer of the structure of the market. We're going to look at that next, as well as the different participants currently in the Bitcoin market, which might may or may not have a significant change in the supply demand, demand dynamics by the time we reach the 2024 halving. Nevertheless, there is a front running of the halving. The front running of the halving is this really big move off the low into the halving. Right. This is when you want to be positioning yourself at the low into the having. You don't want to wait for the having and then go ahead and look to build a position and then wait for the bull market to begin because the bull market really begins at the turn at the low of the previous cycle. And that's where you have the advantage of putting yourself in a position of power by taking on a, a position, building into a position ahead of the bull run. When a lot of people, this is when a lot of, let's say, new participants enter the market as they see price trading around new all-time highs. They then say, you know what? This is something that I want to participate in. There's a lot different taking a position at the having and the, as compared to taking a position into the low. Now, another way that I want to view this is viewing this what I believe to be probably more accurate. And instead of lining these up from the November 2021 high, to their previous highs as, as we did over here, all these all these past cycles. I wanna line that up from April being the all-time high. Do you remember April? This is when Elon Musk went on to Saturday Night Live pumping Dogecoin. Do you remember all of the euphoria taking place in the markets across the board? This, for many reasons, including traditional indicators like the RSI, almost all on-chain indicators point to April actually being the structural high. Now, price did make a higher high in November, but structurally, April was the all-time high. If you line up the previous cycle highs with April, one thing that is very interesting is that you see uh, roughly the same. Do you ever notice that roughly the same amount of time between the all-time high here and then the low? Right over here, you're looking at 411 days. This is just giving you rough estimates over here. And then compared to in 2017 high, and then you take that, extend that over here to the low, you're looking at roughly 360 days. So it was, it was about two months difference, we could say, using this type of uh, just rough sketches over here. And if you continue to use that type of symmetry, again, we're looking at four-year cycle awareness, you could say that, well, it's around this zone over here where price capitulated. You can see the capitulation here, the capitulation here. And then we could say, you know what? Again, potentially around the same amount of days, once again, just to give you a rough estimate again, how many days that would be, that would be 431 days, only 20 days further than the first. You would say, you know what? That's around the zone that we did see past bear markets play out in length and ending with capitulation. Now, whether or not this is capitulation, uh, an argument can be made both ways. To me, seeing first the Luna collapse and then moving over a month later into June 2022, seeing the contagion spread throughout the markets as three arrows and Celsius both collapsed. It makes a lot of sense. One can make an argument that indeed we have seen capitulation. Uh, a lot of people are focused in on the macro, myself included. And it was around this time later into June 
right, that we began lining up what would have to change in the macro as the macro can change rapidly because a lot of people at that point began embracing the narrative that the Fed is tightening, uh, in inflation is high, and therefore the markets are going significantly lower. People taking out numbers, something like 12,000 or 3,000, almost like it's a given, but it's the markets and you can't take anything for granted. Nothing's a given. Just a month later, we had the 9.1 hot CPI inflation number come in and the markets have been rallying ever since. Why is that if inflation is so strong, the markets would be rallying? We've been looking at things like food and commodity prices, noticing in that period them coming off 20 and 30%. It was signaling to us that what the market was doing, it was distinguishing that, hey, that might be for the near term, even the intermediate term, the peak inflation number, and you were beginning to see risk rallying. Since then and now, we've had another inflation print. It came in last week. It came in a little bit under that 9.1 at 8.5, and it is a potential signal that, yes, maybe we did see a peak inflation print. And then you start seeing a repricing of the rate hike expectations in September from a 75 basis points to a 50 basis points. And what that means is even though the Federal Reserve is not done tightening, that maybe we saw the highest uh, hikes take place, 275 basis points in a row, and the market might be taking a look at that turn, that soft turn, or this rally you know, the next the next CPI in, uh, print might be coming in stronger than the last one. And the market might say, oh, well, we mispriced here. We got a price for further tightening. And this current rally that we're experiencing could be sold and sold quickly. It's why you just don't want to go ahead and embrace one particular line of thought. It's why you want to consult multiple different vantage points and in real time, put the work in to put the pieces together. If you are looking at something like April being the structural high, and you are looking at this bear market roughly taking place the same amount of time in length, including ending with a capitulation like past bear markets, then you might be saying that the, well, the front running of the halving is beginning. Now, I personally don't believe that the halving is quite a ways away from where we are right now. I believe what we are seeing, and because if you look at other markets, if you look at the NASDAQ, if you look at the S&P 500, off of that last hot July CPI print 9.1, they all have been rallying since as well. You could look at Ethereum, which we do believe when risk is on and risk is on at the current moment during this rally, we expect it to outperform and people might say there's an extra amount of oomph in there because of what's taking place with the upcoming merge. And well, that makes a lot of sense. But again, it's almost as over this last week, a lot of explanations, a lot of narratives are being put out there to explain what is happening, why. Well, if you go back and look at the YouTube channel and you go back to the videos we were putting out in June and in July, we were watching this take place and giving that analysis of it happening in real time. I think that's the place that you want to be. I think that you want to have a really uh, do your best to not have any type of bias whether that's concerning the macro, whether that's concerning four-year cycle theory. I think once you have some type of bias, what it does is it locks you into a certain view. And then if something is happening, if you're watching the, the price action, if you're watching the tape do something that's contrary to that view, whether it's subconsciously or not, you might be finding ways or reasons to justify your own opinion. If you simply do not take any type of posture whatsoever and really come more like I'm, I'm willing and open to everything and really just want to stay on the right side of the market. I think that's a really, really good starting point. I think you could take it a lot further than that. But nevertheless, that's a really good starting point. If you were to look at potentially some type of bounce current, I want to show you what I believe is like the worst case scenario that could potentially happen. And when I'm when I mean worst case scenario, I, I mean as far as the markets in general. I'm going to use the Nasdaq to show you that, and you could see that over here towards that that peak fear when people were talking about uh, you know much price going down significantly lower. 
I just put out this view of what happened if the NASDAQ could lose another 50%. But you notice it's not straight down. Markets really run straight up and straight down. And, and since then, you could say, wow, this is, this is pretty lucky as price is now trading from, from that 11,500 area up to 13,500. It is quite possible in September around that time that what the market finds out is, you know what, we're already seeing, for example, maybe it's crude oil prices rising. Maybe that is going to be something that triggers higher inflation prints and then realize, you know what, the Fed is actually going to have to continue hiking, not only in the September meeting. Right now, base expectation is a 50 basis point rate hike in September. My base, my base case, a 25% basis point hike in November and likely not, not a given another 25 basis points in December. And that's when the Fed would move to a pause. But that's all data dependent. Again, I can't predict the market six months out from here. If we start seeing food and energy rising again and inflation actually not putting in a near term peak at that point, the market's going to have to reprice itself. If that happens, I do believe it will be sharp quick and sharp down. And you could see if the markets are uh, reacting in some way, shape or form like that, Bitcoin and the crypto markets obviously would not be immune. They are quite still a small market right now. Bitcoin 500, uh, let's call it a $500 billion market cap. It will have to be a significantly higher, at least 20 fold higher before Bitcoin actually is able to do Bitcoin things in face of the macro. And I want you to be prepared for everything going forward. I don't think it's a good idea to embrace the four-year cycle going forward. And again, even from that peak over here, this is coming off the halving. You could, it's, it's hard to argue with, with Jordan, even though we didn't have a blow off top, they did peak around the same time. And, and Jordan, since then, there seems to be a lot of symmetry. Except for, again, lining that up from April to November. If you're lining that up from November, get ready. We could see another big significant leg down. One other trap I see out there is there are a lot of people. These happen to be people that continue to embrace a pretty bearish view of the markets. Again, you have to stay fluid. You want to be able to trade both sides. As price is, it has a bearish momentum, you want to have that, that bearish view and be looking to sell rallies. However, when you see a change and a pivot, you then want to be able to pin, pivot your view as well. A lot of people really do believe that and, and almost indignant that we will be looking at one more big leg down and, and that will be the last leg down. There, if, look, if, if we start seeing the markets roll over, I hope that I'm able to be in front of it and early and, and be able to adjust my stance again, always with that willingness, that desire to be on the right side of the market. Again, that even here's a perfect example. My expectations were pretty strong. I would say, you know, a very, a very, very high probability that the markets were going to move into a blow off top move over here. But when they broke down into that technical breakdown, able to like it or not, able to de risk down and point it out as it was happening in real time. For those that were willing to hear, a lot of people do not want to change their view. That's similar over here. If we have another big leg down for any reason, at that point, you can't just assume that's the last one. It's very important to trade what is happening. So I hope that's helpful for you in kind of explaining my view as far as the four-year cycle. I would say that as far as four-year cycle awareness, I, 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 would, I would definitely say that my awareness was up there is very, very, very strong indeed. I personally going forward, no longer believe it's an edge for myself. I can from time to time look at charts, especially with understanding the four-year cycle, see how they continue to line up. But what we've, you, you, you've heard about that, you know, during bear markets, it's time for building. What we've been able to accomplish here, and I, I say we together, me and, and my personal my personal trading group, what we've been able to accomplish during the bear market is absolutely phenomenal. It does not, th that edge is significantly greater than my four year cycle edge ever was. And I feel really good about that because I said coming in, I said, you know what? If we don't have a blow off top, I will personally be abandoning my four year cycle theory going forward and I will lean in totally 
to my technical analysis. Now, of course, that that includes the macro, that includes most of all uh, risk and money management. But again, it just provides, um, let's say it's really, really, really wonderful being in a position where you don't have to guess, where you don't have to have some type of assumptions of what may or may not happen, but you know exactly when to be in the market, exactly when to be at of the market and on what side. That right there, my friends, is conquering the markets. Again, if you enjoyed this video and you're new, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. If you're, if you're not new, I can't wait to the next one. I'll see you all again soon. Thanks for being here.